thanks for inviting me and for such a warm welcome and i wish you all the teachers those who are listening i wish you a happy teachers day uh, and thank you so much teach for india as well for inviting me to speak to you here today i'm very honored to be the last year's global teacher prize winner but i was one of a number of teachers uh, shortlisted from all over the world all of whom who had changed lives and made a huge contribution to teaching i was very pleased to be able to share uh, half of a prize money with my fellow panelists this global teacher prize does not recognize me it actually shines a light on teachers and teaching profession to encourage people to give teachers the respect they deserve and to show how good teaching can change lives for a better and today I want to talk about my teaching experiences, my school, my <clears throat> teaching as well, and what it has taught me about my profession. So, some people who grow up to be a teachers, they say that they loved a school from the first day, but that wasn't the case with me. Personally, I was not a best behaved student at school. I don't like to be. kept inside a classroom all the time i often wanted to go outside and to do other things i used to ask a lot of questions in a class and my teachers didn't always like it and i was never very interested in grades i was more interested in learning new skills discovering uh, the rich world that we all are part of it and so from the beginning as a teacher i wanted to change how teaching was done and improve on what i had experienced in a school so when i went to teacher training college i learned a lot from my two teachers who convinced me that it could be done differently they showed me how good educators could inspire their students and help shape their communities over the years and decades rather than just focusing on root learning and grades so this was a very important lesson that still informs everything i do in a classroom today so my first teaching job and also so far only one was in jila parishad primary school paritewadi in maharashtra and when i first arrived there in 2009 i knew straight away that it could be a challenge in rural india there are often two types of problems obstacles to education the first is lack of resources and facilities and my new school was located in between a cattle shed and a store room and the second obstacle is traditional ideas about gender roles and education for various reasons which i will come to talk about it later the tradition in the village was for girls to be getting married as a teenage and many left school before they had finished their education in general girls education was not taken very seriously though it was not much better for the boys as well in fact only a quarter of people in the village had finished their education and as a result attendance rate in a school was sometimes as low as 2% and the students were not achieving expected learning outcomes but i am very pleased to say we were able to turn these problems around but how first there was a problem of students poor learning this was not only due to lack of support for girls education it was more about more general problem with how the children were being taught for instance curriculum and textbooks but not in the local language of community which was it called as kannada instead they were in marathi language a language which i knew but the students didn't really my own experience at school made me aware that education has to respond to students need and so i knew that something had to be done with these textbooks but first to be able to help them i needed to learn the local language in india teachers don't always uh, live in the communities where they teach it however i knew that learn kannada properly i would have to become a full part of a community and so i moved into the village and began learning it took me some time 
But when I felt confident, I started straight away. I knew that to really capture the students' attention, I would need more than textbooks. I would need to use other media beyond the printed page. So I developed a way to add online materials to students' learning experience by adding QR codes to the textbooks. This idea is, the idea is that very simple. Students scan a QR code in a book with their mobile devices. And this then it takes them to YouTube channel, YouTube video on a topic or an educational website, or in some cases, a pieces of audio I had recorded earlier. Most importantly, using different QR codes in a box, I could tailor the material to individual students or groups based on their learning styles. We use poems, lectures, and stories. This can be very useful. For example, when students respond better to video or any other visual media, rather than just the text or audio, it can also be very helpful with students who need who have a special needs. And most important, the way of teaching let them learn in a guided way when they are at home. Our school happened to be the first school in Maharashtra to use a QR coded textbook. But since this way of teaching has spread far and wide. Following our success, the state education ministry and then Indian national ministry had begun to use them in their uh, textbooks. The QR code feature has been very important for encouraging girls' education. So girls' education was taken very seriously in my village, as I told you. And throughout many parts of the world, girls get far less education than boys. Around 130 million girls globally are out of school. And there are many reasons for this. One is the traditional societies tends to place more importance on boys' education because they believe that they will be breadwinners and the girls will have to raise the children. Girls are often encouraged to marry as teenage, cutting short their education. I think that in other cases, caring responsibilities are placed on girls. And this limits a time that they can spend in the school. Sometimes there is also expectation that girls do not attend school during their monthly cycle. This means they are away for a few days. As a teacher, we have to try to convince parents that girls' education is a worthwhile investment. This is very important for improvement of empowerment of the girls and women. But there are also other reasons as well. For instance, uh, a literate mother has a 50% higher chance of her child surviving past the age of five. An educated woman invests as much as 90% of her income into the family and community, thereby raising standards of living. So as the solutions to economic problems, it is estimated that 12 years of universal education for girls could unlock about $30 trillion in earnings and equivalent. For context, that's more than United States national debt. So we aim to build up girls' self-confidence, skills and voices, and then help them to be their own advocates because they learn through the other media beyond the textbook and discuss materials with other students outside the schools, girls began to express themselves better way and communicate more clearly. So proper education on these matters within the schools is essential. So older children need to understand why it is important to show respect to each and other and respect the boundaries. So over the last decades, we have made a great deal of progress. Parents in the community have started to believe in girls' education and see that school offers them a great deal. So today, there is a virtually 100% attendance in the schools. There are no recent teenage marriages. So I have seen that if we allow girls to make their own choices, they do amazing things. In fact, one of my girl students, Sakshi, had even graduated from university and now works as an engineer. 
Equally, uh, on a boy's side, students called Vikram is now studying in MBA, uh, doing his MBA in agriculture. So his aim to revolutionize the farming sector by bringing it up to that and with new technologies and new methodologies. So, however, that's not to say that we don't have, haven't faced any challenges and obstacles. Recently, COVID-19 has caused lots of problems. Unfortunately, pandemic is creating barriers for girls' education everywhere in the world. Last year alone, it pushed more than 150 million people globally into the extreme poverty. Lack of money and family health troubles means that school age girls are now having to go out to work and to provide their beloved ones or else staying at home and take care of their little brothers and sisters. As I described earlier, we have always had some element of online teaching in our school, but now our entire teaching goes online. So COVID had just taught us one more in, important things and it underlines for us how technology is more and more important for education today. Even without the pandemic, people needs or students needs a freedom to be able to learn at different times of a day in a different ways. So let me say a little bit about how teaching with technology can be a success, why it sometimes fails as well. So some people today think that if they just throw technology at problems, they are instantly solved. But this is hardly ever true, even less often in education. In the best cases, technology just makes an idea possible that was previously impossible. So, to, to the, uh, so the key to any successful innovation is having an original and useful teaching idea that you, and then you can later on use it to teach online or any format. So this is why teachers don't have to be tech genius in order to come up with innovative, innovative educational tech ideas. So unfortunately, internet connectivity in many places around the world still seems to be at a low level, particularly in rural areas of developing economies. The Teachers Task Force, an international alliance coordinated by UNESCO on the basis of the data from UNESCO's Institute of Data Science and Statistics has shown that around 1.75 billion learners worldwide have no access to internet. When I designed this QR code textbook, I knew that there was a one mobile per family in my area, and that was just enough for children to borrow for an hour or two in the evening to do some extra learning. I designed it around the tech that was available to them, and that was they were very comfortable while using it. So what made it successful was its practicality. And the fact it solved a teaching problem. The tech was only the means, not end. However, since then we have done a lot more with the help of technology uh, and other things. It has allowed me to reach out more and more communities and communicate with them and to inspire my students to become their own advocates. So I began to work on a project like Peace Army, where we invite students from India, Pakistan, Israel, Palestine, Iraq, Iran. They sit together and they discuss why they are fighting, what are the problems they are facing, and what could be the better solutions to it. So, what exactly the technology we use? We use a simple techniques of video calling and discussing with each other. So, my aim in discussing all these things is to be some sharing my expertise with you all in other schools, teachers, those who are learning. So let me try summarize what I've learned over the last decade as I have watched my school and my community to grow. Much of the world today struggles to provide quality universal education, particularly to the girls. At the same time, many countries support political tensions, conflict, 
whether within the country or outside. So this disrupts education. It disrupts growth. It stops us from creating a better future and solving the problems of coming century. So what I consistently found is that empowering students, particularly girls, is an essential first step towards tackling these issues. Getting them in believing themselves and become self-starting learners is one of the biggest things that I could give to you as a teacher. And second, we as a teacher must be prepared to tailor our teaching to both individual students and the communities as well. So in my opinion, most important factor in providing quality education is to create great teachers and empower them to do great things. Outside my school duties, I often engage in teachers training. I learn so many things and I share my expertise. To get, to, to get the best out of the students, we must become a teacher of 21st century. Because currently, students of 21st century are being taught by teachers of 20th century using that 19th century curriculum on an 18th century techniques. And empowered students can only be nurtured by empowered teachers. And the teacher's empowerment should begin from today. More often, not just with the students, but throughout the teachers across the world, which is start empowering them. Teachers also need to support each other to do all these things. That's why I started a uh, teaching community. I joined uh, a learning platform, so many learning platforms, platforms where I could learn about and get to know new methodologies in teacher teaching professions. So as I also uh, believe in the principle of sharing and growing, I shared my 50% of prize money with the top 10 pioneers just because their incredible work should be recognized and should be supported. So I think we should start sharing our knowledge, our skills, and our money as well. So to be a teacher of 21st century, you require hard work, leadership, creativity, and genuine empathy for students. We need to show that teaching is a profession to aspire to. In India, there is now much more positively about positivity about teachers and as a result of an Indian teacher winning Global Teacher Prize. It may boost the status of educators throughout the country in, in upcoming years. And so I feel very privileged to be an ambassador for teachers, both in my own country and around the world. So finally, although teachers are a crucial link in the chain, they cannot change the world on their own. The teaching methodologies I bought, uh, brought in the Chilaparisha school were success, but without interest and resources for Indian state and national governments, the lessons learned would have remained local. So the governments, NGOs, schools needs to collaborate, collect the data on successful teaching practices, ensure that the best use is made of resources. So looking to the future, we as a global society have to realize that the failing to educate children in a proper, uh, in the poorer countries will only deepen and postpone the problems facing us in the century. To solve these challenges, we are going to need educated, creative leaders of every type and of every background in every part of the globe. People who can tackle the climate change, political unrest and the problems that flow from a growing world populations with pure resources. This means that 12 years of high quality education for everyone is must. If teachers, governments and NGOs can talk together, can work together, we all can make this a reality. But the time for action is now, not later. So I think on concluding remarks so that we should start celebrating teachers' work. Teachers should be respected. They should be given the respect that they deserve. Thank you so much for listening to me.